Honestly, the Phantom Menace, I don't think, have even watched anime. A lot of them haven't. And even if they have, it's like, and I'm just going to say this one thing, because we hear this all the time. Japan doesn't give a fuck about, you know, politics. The SJWs are seething. It's like, I don't know how, why anyone would push that narrative, because Japan has never gave a shit about what Westerners, you know, think. They do what the fuck they want in their fucking shows. They don't fucking, you know, bend over backwards for Westerners. Yeah, you have some shows in Japan that are more popular in the West than in their home country, but they don't give a fuck. Japan isn't going to bend over backwards, you know, for a bunch of Westerners. Because, you know, some characters in, in some shows are more popular, in, you know, in the West than they are in Japan. And the reverse is also true. And also, regarding, you know, manga... The reason why manga is doing better than comics is it is one simple fact. And that is, you know, Marvel and DC, when you look at a, at a bookshelf full of titles, it's overwhelming, you know, where to start when it comes to a, a Marvel and, and Spider-Man comic or, or X-Men or whatever. And if that be honest here, if you look at the anime section... Which is getting is bigger than, than the you know Marvel and DC section now. It's obvious. Why is it getting bigger? Because manga worldwide is more popular than Marvel and DC. It has nothing to do with SJWs. This was happening long before Comics Gate, and I witnessed this firsthand: the rise of manga. Manga, at first, had only one shelf, while DC and Marvel had had an entire, like, two whole shelves, or three whole shelves, or four. Over time, though, that shrank. And why? Because manga actually sell. Why do manga sell? For various reasons. Manga have you know, a lot of titles with people with various tastes. And Marvel and DC just don't have as many options to choose from. And not to mention that manga, unlike Marvel comics, it's easy to know, oh, I want to start from the very beginning of this series. Where do I start? You know, Marvel... It's like, uh, start with this comic, start with that comic, start with this comic, start with that comic. It's just manga is is more beginner friendly when you're introducing new people to manga. If you want to get people into a series and they don't know and they want to read something because it interests them, all you have to do is recommend the first volume. And if they like the first volume, they'll 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 read the second volume. And if they like the second volume, they'll read the third. And if they like the third, they'll read the fourth. And if they like the fourth, they'll read the fifth. And not to mention, the, the average manga, you know, is not fucking shown in jump length. A lot of them are, are relatively short, like, you know, eight or ten or twelve volumes around average. So there's an almost endless supply of manga to choose from. You cannot say the same for, for Marvel and DC. There's like a thousand Spider-Man comics, a thousand Batman comics, a thousand Superman comics. Well, it's more than that. It's like thousands. So it's it's very overwhelming where to go if you want to actually go to a good place to start. And the continuity is usually really loose in those comics. It's very difficult to follow. And the best stories, and especially DC, are usually Elseworld stories. Marvel it is honestly a mess when it comes to where where do you recommend someone to start? It's like people usually recommend, oh, you should check out this run of this comic based based on on this person. Like Chris Claymont is like one of the best X Men writers. A lot of people you know pull, you know point to him as you know, as comics that are a good place to start for X Men. Manga is very simple. It's one artist most of the time and one author. Now, 
there are some rare occasions you do have a manga artist that has a a, a artist and a and a different writer. Not all manga, you know, have you know the, an artist and a writer, you know, doing both. It's if Death Note is an example of this. You have someone else doing the art and someone else doing the, you know the story. And yeah, that's one of the reasons why. And not to mention the rise of the manga industry and anime worldwide is, is also a contributing factor for Marvel and DC's decline. It's just simple. It just doesn't appeal to the youth anymore. A lot of kids nowadays, when they think of Marvel, they don't think of a comic book. They think of the movies. And if people want to read comic books, there's a lot more options. You don't need to freaking read some DC or Marvel anymore. You have many options, not just from, from, you know, indie comics to, you know, image boom to image. Yes. Boom image. Sorry. And I'm pretty sure there's a few others. You don't have, you know, the limited options anymore. Like, like he did like before the 2000s, before Tokyo Pop, which was the biggest distributor of manga before Shonen Jump, before you know Viz Media replaced it. That basically took the the industry by storm. Comic books just cannot keep up with manga. There's more manga, and there's a lot more to choose from. Yeah, there's a lot of manga that are garbage. Yeah, there's a lot of manga that are questionable in terms of quality. But that's just how this works, honestly. You don't get that for DC and Marvel. Like, unless you know what you're doing, you, you'll be climbing a mountain of shit before you find anything good for Marvel and DC. There's a lot of good comics in those, but there's a lot of shit too. You don't have to do that for a manga if you don't like a manga after you read the first volume or two then you can just drop it and read something else and not to mention it, it, it's just like cheaper too to get manga like the three in ones that you know Viz has been selling for almost 10 years now is the cheapest and most efficient way to get a new manga collector to get a series. I'm going to use an example. One Piece. One Piece is the lo- pretty much in the West anyway, there's longer running anime series and manga than One Piece. But I'm talking about that's been released in, a, in the States. One Piece has close to 100 volumes. Probably 100 now in Japan. And it's actually very difficult to catch up to One Piece. Or if you want to start a One Piece manga collection, options, or three actually, you can get the individual manga. A lot of, a good chunk of them are out of print. You could get the box sets, which has like over 20 something volumes. $200 a piece, which is probably the second cheapest option. Or you get the cheapest option, which is the three in ones. Now, there's two of them, mind you. Now, I'm just using one piece as an example. The three in ones, which are are cheap paperbacks, reprints of manga that actually, the reason why they're so popular, why they you know, it's so easy to find those is because the the Viz Big Editions, which Viz released for very few manga, they've only done it for a few, like Roni Kenshin, Iyunasha, Dragon Ball. And unfortunately, those didn't sell that well compared to the, the three-in-ones, which are $15 a piece. And of course, if you depending where you go, you probably can get them for ten dollars a piece, depending on where you buy them. And if you think about it, that adds up. 
You get three manga volumes for like $10, $15. And compare that to an American comic book. If you're to buy the same amount of material, 600 pages worth of material for a Marvel or DC comic, Hell, even Boom Studios, which is my, my, probably my favorite studio, my favorite comic company for comics, it would cost you, and I shit you not, eighty dollars plus. So it is pretty obvious why manga is doing better than comic books. Because think about it, how much content do you get? from a manga versus a comic book for 15 bucks or 20, depending on which company you get it for, you get more content for cheaper than you would. If you were to buy a Marvel comic, if you got the same amount of content, which would probably, which would cost you a hundred dollars. Now do the math. Are people going to spend 15 bucks or $10 in some places, depending on where you buy these three in ones? Are they going to spend $10 or 15 on 600 pages worth of content? Or are they just going to fork out $100 for inferior comics for, a, for you know, a much more expensive price? No, they're going to go for the cheaper editions. That's why manga is doing better than American comics. And it's nothing to do with SJWs. It has nothing to do with a bunch of made-up nonsense that anarcho-capitalist, narcissist, young Ripa likes to talk about. It's simply because it's a cheaper, viable option for people who like the comic art form but do not like the modern you know, iteration of Marvel and DC, and they want an alternative. That's why it's cheaper. It's not cheaper for any other reason other than... No, cheaper. Sorry, what am I saying? The reason why people buy those because it's simply cheaper. Now, I'm not saying that manga can't be expensive. It can be. Again, it depends on the comic book company that you buy it from or manga. If you're trying to get into Berserk, holy shit, that's going to cost you a pretty a, that's going to cost you a lot of money. If you if you're going to buy Berserk. I mean, Berserk is owned by Dark Horse. Same thing with Helsing. So that's pretty much going to cost you more than pretty much any manga. It's going to probably cost as much as an American comic. So the reason why comics are, are like more expensive, you know, it also another reason has to do with the kind of paper that the comics use and, and the coloring they use and vice versa. It is, I don't know. And they just charge premium price. It's like manga is going to continue to beat Marvel and DC Comics simply because it's, it's a cheap alternative to, you know, if you are a fan of comic books as an art form and you're not getting what you want out of Marvel and DC, you're going to go to someplace that's cheaper and it doesn't, it's not going to cost you an arm and a leg. I mean, not to mention, manga get reprinted very often compared to Marvel and DC Comics. That's another reason why they do as well. Not to mention, another thing to take into consideration why it's become more popular is, is as someone that read, you know, Naruto back in the in the, I know, I can't believe I've read that garbage. That read Naruto, you know. Before, you know, it actually became easy to, to actually read these kind of mangas. I read a lot of it through Scanlations. Scanlations is the reason why manga is as big as it is. You don't, there isn't a big Scanlation scene for American comics. There isn't compared to manga. Manga, you know, that scene is the reason why, like, before, you know, the, the manga scanlation scene was big, Naruto was like at least 
almost 10 or 20 volumes behind in the, you know, in the States compared to what it was in Japan. Bleach was also, you know, almost freaking 20 volumes behind. One Piece was like almost 40 volumes behind before the scanlation scene. And when manga started to get more popular in order to meet the demand, in order to, to combat piracy, instead of doing what freaking Marvel and DC would do, they met that demand and they and they actually took all these manga and translated them at a faster rate. Like there was a point where Naruto and, and Bleach and One Piece, they released and Inasha actually too, they released three volumes a month until they were they were caught up to Japan. That's why One Piece, you know, at most were a few volumes behind Japan. And but here's another thing that, that they do. They also release the chapters, you know, in English and officially as it's released in Japan. So you don't have to resort to scanlations anymore to read One Piece like you would 12 years ago. That's just how far the industry has gone. And I think this dishonesty on manga becoming as popular as they was because of SJWs is complete nonsense. Especially if you haven't actually, be, weren't, if you weren't a part of the scene like I was. I saw the slow evolution of the anime community and the manga, you know, as well. I've seen it evolve. So I know the trends. I was there for, for almost from, from the start. Well, anime, that's different because... Fan subs were much more difficult to come by, but that's a different topic.